Good morning. Thank you for joining us um, at our online worship here at Naper Cove. We're so excited that you joined us today. Uh, here at Naper Cove, we strive daily to know God fully, to love each other authentically, and to serve uh, courageously. And we hope that you want to join us in our mission. Uh, we want to invite you to connect with us. Uh, you can do that virtually by either going to our website or hitting the link uh, that you find on the thread. Uh, you can tell us information about yourself. Uh, you can let us know if you want to know more information about us. But either way, we really want to hear from you. Um, there's also a link for you to click that you can send in prayer requests. So if there are things going on in your life that you would like us to lift up as a staff and as a church community, uh, please feel free to take that opportunity uh, to follow that link and give us your prayer requests and your praise reports. We also want to thank you for joining in our mission uh, through your giving. Uh, your sacrificial giving has been what allows us to continue to do ministry um, in regular seasons and in this season of um, uh, just unanswered questions and uncertainty. And so we thank you for your continued partnership, and we ask that if you uh, feel so compelled to do so, that you take the opportunity to join us um, in giving today. By way of announcement, we just want to remind you that on Sunday, August uh, the 23rd, we will be having um, a drive-by communion where you just pull up to the front, you take your communion elements, um, and then you pull into a parking space because after that drive-through communion, we will have um, uh, just a parking lot fellowship because uh, we want to be able to spend some time together. Uh, we had a pretty good turnout the last time, and we want to see that be even bigger. So we just plan uh, for, you know, you watch the service, turn it off, and then head straight to the church. Uh, we will be here uh, August the 23rd, starting 1145. We look forward to um, seeing you. Uh, today is also a special occasion. I want to invite Kayla Davenport to come up here. So some of you may know or may not know that today, August 16th, um, is Kayla's five-year anniversary serving Naperville Covenant Church um, as the director of worship um, and our director of administration. And we just wanted to uh, give her a token of our appreciation. Uh, no amount of money or gifts could really say thank you, um, but uh, there's gifts from the staff and then there's a gift from the executive board just to say, Kayla, thank you. We love you. We appreciate everything that you do to help ministry happen here. And we also love your husband, Andrew. You guys are a part of who we are. Um, so we're just thankful for you, and we don't want you to forget it. So uh, God bless you, and congratulations on five years. Thank you. Yeah. Jesse, I'm smiling. <laughs> right. She's smiling behind the mask. So uh, anyway, enjoy the rest of our time of worship together. God bless. Well, again, good morning and welcome to church. My name is Kayla, as you've seen me, and we've got Andrew, Chris, and Damon's joining us this week on vocals. Um, and I'm just so grateful for um, five years of ministry here at Naperville Covenant Church with all of you as a worshiping body of believers. Even though you're not here with us today, um, I trust that you're at home singing loud in your living rooms or kitchens or wherever you're at. Um, and as I was preparing for this uh, service this Sunday, um, when I realized that this was going to be five years exactly um, since my first Sunday, uh, I actually also realized that one of the songs that we're going to be singing later, we also sang on my first Sunday here at Neighborville Covenant. Um, and that's What a Friend We Have in Jesus, which we'll sing later in the service. Um, but I looked back at my notes from that day, and um, I kind of had shared a little bit of my heart for worship and my hope for us as a, a worshiping body, as a community of believers, um, as I started my ministry here. And um, I, I was really um, uh, kind of amazed at how true um, and how I guess maybe we need to hear that message again. <laughs> and so I wanted to share a little bit about what I had talked about that day five years ago and how I think that can be an encouragement to us today. Um, because I had talked about how, you know, I had served in um, a community in the Pine Ridge Native American Reservation um, before I started here. And once a week we would sing in the community. And every time when we would sing that song, What a Friend We Have in Jesus, the people in the community would, would stop and they would listen. 
Um, and sometimes they would even sing along. And no matter what state of mind they were in, no matter what they were doing, um, people would stop. And I realized that the familiarity of that song for them really drew them in. And wherever they were at, you know, the, the burden of the world and the heaviness of sin was so evident. Um, and that to have this reminder of, of this God who knows every weakness, that just for a moment, that would draw them in to fix their eyes on Jesus. And so that Sunday, five years ago, I talked about how that is my hope for us as a community. And that continues to be my hope for us today, that as we sit in the midst of such a heavy place in our world, where the burden of the world and maybe the sin and the darkness that we feel so heavy, that maybe on these Sunday mornings, even just for a moment, we can fix our eyes on Jesus, the author and perfecter of our faith. Remember that he is good. Remember that he is victorious, that we can raise a hallelujah together. And so I know there are thousands of other things that you could be doing right now in your homes, um, but I just want to encourage us that during this season, and, and especially today, that we would sit down and focus our eyes, focus our hearts on Jesus, and remember the goodness that he has poured out on us, that he is our friend, and that he is victorious. So we'll sing that song a little bit later, um, but for now, I want to invite you to engage with us as we, um, as we sing.
by singing What a Friend We Have in Jesus. And I talked about the familiarity of that song, um, and we're going to try something different with it today. Uh, we're going to try singing it in Lingala, which is the um, language in some communities in the Democratic Republic of Congo. And our friend Aime Kasembo is going to help us uh, with the pronunciation of these words. And so um, we're, let's turn now. I've recorded our conversation with Aime, and he's going to help us um, with the pronunciation in Lingala. Uh, I'm going to start. Yesu Ndeko Nabolingo. Yesu Ndeko na bolingo. Yo olingi ngai mingi. Yo olingi ngai mingi. Yo okufe laki ngai pe. Yo okufe laki ngai pe. O talisaki ngai jela. O talisaki ngai jela. All right, should I sing that? Yeah, if you can. Yes, undeko na bolingo. Yo, o lingi ngai mingi. Yo, o kufe la kingai pe. Alisa kinga njela. Nice. All right. Great, now the second part. Ngai nandimi. Kolo Yesu. Ngai nandimi kolo Yesu. Alleluia na Yesu. Alleluia na Yesu. Ngai nalingi kolo Yesu. 
Ngai na lingi kolo Yesu. Alleluia na Yesu. Alleluia na Yesu. Ngai na dimi kolo Yesu. Alleluia na Yesu. Ngai na lingi kolo Yesu. Alleluia na Yesu. Perfect. All right. Thank you. you. <laughs> no yeah. Problem. Awesome. Well, thank you to Aime for uh, helping us out with that translation, isn't it? Uh, he did such a great job. I wish I told him I wish that he could be up here um, leading us in this song, but I told him next time when we're back together, he's being called up to lead us. <laughs> um, so again, I want to encourage you as we sing this song, give it a try, sing it in Lingala, and we'll sing one verse in English, and you'll see the translation um, on the screen. But let's continue as we worship. just want to, uh, as we continue in worship, uh, just take some time out to uh, pray. Uh, we are so just thankful to those of you who um, sent your prayer request in as we just find value in lifting up the things on your heart. Uh, we celebrate uh, with our sister Francine who uh, had been waiting for months and months for her, uh, for her case to go before the judge and it, Things were ruled in her favor, so we are excited about that. Uh, we still mourn with our brother Lincoln 
Um, but both he and Sandy are very appreciative of just the prayers and calls that they have received um, on the passing of his brother, um, Richard. Our brother Jim is thankful for the calls and the prayers that he's received as Jean is recovering um, in, uh, in her facility right now. Um, so there's just a lot of gratitude um, in our congregation right now. And we um, continue uh, to just think about each other and pray for each other, um, though we're not together. So I ask right now that you join me in prayer. Gracious and holy God, uh, today we just say thank you. Um, dear Lord, we just say thank you because even in the midst of all the chaos, dear Lord, we see you moving and working. Dear Lord, we are encouraged by hearing how many folks um, are finding connectivity, um, not just to Naper Cub, but to churches all over the country um, through this new online presence. Uh, dear Lord, uh, this, this pandemic has forced us to do things differently. Uh, do things that are outside of our comfort zone, but we um, are seeing that you are even moving. Um, the Lord, we know that you know uh, the way and the direction before we even do. The Lord, so we pray that as we continue to um, to adjust and adapt, um, that we are following your lead, dear Lord, so that we can share um, the gospel with people who do not know your love. The Lord, just thank you for all of the folks who have stuck with us through this time, who have been giving and sacrificially giving, dear Lord, so that the needs of the ministry can be met. Dear Lord, that we don't have to go without. Dear Lord, we are so thankful as we hear churches that are wondering if they're going to be able to keep the doors open. Dear Lord, we are just thankful that we, um, that our outlook is just positive, Lord, so we just lift those things up. Dear Lord, we continue to just think about the people in our congregation um, who are mourning uh, right now. Um, dear Lord, just uh, we think about um, those who have lost loved ones um, in this season who um, have yet to be able to do the, the different home goings um, in a way that feels like um, a proper celebration, dear Lord. So for those who are kind of left in the, the kind of interim period right now, dear Lord, we just lift them up. Lord, I want to lift up um, our sister Judy to you, dear Lord, as she is uh, dealing with body pain and has to find another uh, specialist. Continue to pray for Jean as she rehabs. We um, lift up Cheryl McRoberts, her um, friend Joe, um, who is uh, going up for more cardiovascular testing. Dear Lord, we lift up our sister Pam Norris as she um, just cares for her mom as her mom is um, in the homestead in Batavia um, because of just, just behavior that has been changing. Um, dear Lord, we just lift up all of these names before you, um, dear Lord. We pray that somehow that our that our prayers, um, dear Lord, are, are heard to your ears as we know that you are working. Uh, we pray that you just lift the burdens and the heartache of those um, who are struggling right now in this season. Dear Lord, we lift up our city to you, dear Lord. We lift up uh, just Naperville and all of the teachers who are trying to figure out what it looks like um, to continue to teach virtually as they miss their students. Um, for all of the kids who are disappointed that they don't get to go back to school um, in the next couple of weeks. Dear Lord, we pray just for um, just for this, this, this pandemic to uh, be gotten under control, dear Lord, so there um, can be some type of connectivity as we are hearing uh, more and more churches are closing and, um, and waiting to come back. And those who are deciding to gather, dear Lord, and those who have gathered and um, had sickness, dear Lord, it's just all over the place, dear God. And we know um, that it can be unnerving, dear Lord, but we ask and believe that you just comfort our hearts, comfort our minds, comfort our spirit, and guide all the decisions that we make, dear Lord, because we are reminded that worship doesn't just happen um, within these four walls, but worship is a way of life, um, dear Lord. And so even in the midst of not coming together, dear Lord, we know that we are connected by your Holy Spirit. Dear Lord, we continue to pray for our world, dear Lord, in this season. Um, dear Lord, there's all of the different things happening um, in our world today, dear Lord. We pray that love reigns, that love wins, that the spirit of unity comes across um, our world and our country, that we begin to value human life the Lord and see value where the world tells us that there isn't any um the Lord we pray that there is just a double pouring out of your Holy Spirit um the Lord that will change hearts and transform minds 
And the Lord, in whatever place Napier Cove has in that work, the Lord, we pray um, that we are doing it, that we are living it, that we are doing life in such a way that brings honor and glory to you and that reminds folks that you love them. So we lift this time up to you. We lift the rest of this service up to you as Pastor Josiah comes to us later, dear Lord. Bless his message. Bless the time that he has spent praying and preparing for the Lord. And pray that our hearts and minds are open to hear what it is that you have given him to say. Be with us. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Good morning. This is Shirley and Wendell Gustafson and Caden. And we're going to read Mark 9, 14 through 29. When they came to the other disciples, they saw a large crowd around them and the teachers of the law arguing with them. As soon as all the people saw Jesus, they were overwhelmed with wonder and ran to greet him. What are you arguing with them about? He asked. A man in the crowd answered, Teacher, I brought you my son who is possessed by a spirit that has robbed him of speech. Whenever it seizes him, it throws him to the ground. He foams at the mouth, gnashes his teeth, and becomes rigid. I asked your disciples to drive out the spirit, but they could not. You unbelieving generation, Jesus replied. How long shall I stay with you? How long shall I put up with you? Bring the boy to me. So they brought him. When the spirit saw Jesus, it immediately threw the boy into a convulsion. He fell to the ground and rolled around, foaming at the mouth. Jesus asked the boy's father, How long has the boy been like this? From childhood, he answered. It has often thrown him into fire or water to kill him. But if you can do anything, take pity on us and help us. If you can, said Jesus, everything is possible for one who believes. Immediately the boy's father explained, I do believe. Help me overcome my unbelief. When Jesus saw that the crowd was running to the scene, he rebuked the impure spirit. You deaf and mute spirit, he said, I command you, come out of him and enter him and never enter him again. The spirit shrieked, convulsed him violently and came out. The boy looked so much like a corpse that many said, he's dead. But Jesus took him by the hand and lifted him to his feet and he stood up. After Jesus had gone indoors, his disciples asked him privately, Why couldn't we drive it out? He replied, This kind can come out only by prayer. Thank you so much, Shirley and Caden, for reading our scripture today. I always enjoy just seeing the different faces of our congregation reading our scripture. So I'm Josiah Chang, and I'm the pastor of student ministries here. And I thought it would be very fitting for me to introduce a popular video game series and TV show that's <laughs> among the kids, and it's called Pokemon. So for all of those who don't know what that is, I'm going to explain this to you, or you can ask your kids or somebody, but this is a very popular series, so you should know it. Well, Pokemon, its main character, his name is Ash Ketchum, and his goal is to be a Pokemon master, and how he achieves this goal is by battling other trainers and using his Pokemon to make the other trainers' uh, Pokemon faint. Now, some of you might be thinking, this might be some animal abuse, or it might not be the best thing, but never fear. They have this amazing thing called a Pokemon Center that heals the Pokemon and makes them good as new. So anyways, Ash, he has one of his favorite Pokemon, and his Pokemon's name is Pikachu. Well, Ash and Pikachu, they have to work in synchronization and communication in being able to win these battles. So Ash will tell Pikachu to use a specific move, and Pikachu has to use that move, and uh, he has to do it quickly. And they're supposed to be in sync in order to beat their opponents. Well, their relationship reminds me of our relationship with God, where we, like Pikachu, have to listen to God who commands us. And when we listen to him, and quickly, we 
find success. So that brings the question, how do we communicate with God? Now, I know that a lot of you are used to shouting at your TVs during sports events and when there's a game winner or anything like that. So use this time to do the same thing. So interact with me. Um, I know I can't hear you, but uh, I'll pretend that I can. So how do we communicate with God? That's right. We communicate with God through prayer. And in our passage today, we're going to see that we need to be praying in all situations. In all situations, we need to be praying. Well, in our passage, right before it, you see that Jesus was transfigured um, on top of a mountain, and his disciples are starting to recognize him as the Savior. And before that, he sent out his disciples into the different villages where they went and did miracles, they cast out demons, and did many miraculous things and shared the gospel, the good news. So that brings us to our passage. We're at Mark 9, verses 14 through 29. And I'm just going to read a certain passage, so follow along with me. Again, that's Mark 9, 14 through 20 is what I'm going to read right now. When they came to the other disciples, they saw a large crowd around them and the teachers of the law arguing with them. As soon as all the people saw Jesus, they were overwhelmed with wonder and ran to greet him. What are you arguing with them about? He asked. A man in the crowd answered, Teacher, I brought you my son, who is possessed by a spirit that has robbed him of speech. Whenever it seizes him, it throws him to the ground. He foams at the mouth, gnashes his teeth, and becomes rigid. I asked your disciples to drive out the spirit, but they could not. You unbelieving generation, Jesus replied. How long shall I stay with you? How long shall I put up with you? Bring the boy to me. So they brought him. When the spirit saw Jesus, it immediately threw the boy into a convulsion. He fell to the ground and rolled around, foaming at the mouth. Now, put yourselves in this situation. Step into this story. So, as... Jesus and his disciples are descending a mountain. They see this large crowd. So there's a large crowd around uh, the disciples and the scribes, and it, it seems like a fight is about to happen. So the crowd is gathering, and they're ready for this fight. You can almost hear them chanting, fight, fight, fight. And as Jesus is approaching, somebody sees him and says, hey, look, there's a master. And then all of a sudden, there's this quiet. All heads look towards Jesus, and then there's this excitement that's building up. And as Jesus comes closer, you can feel that this crowd, there's a a sense of anticipation. It's sort of like when you're at an NBA game and or watching one, and you can expect that basketball player to sink that three-pointer or to dunk. And there's just all this anticipation, and they're ready for Jesus to perform this miracle. And So Jesus comes up to them and asks them, what are you arguing about? And we find out that the disciples were not able to cast out this demon of the son that's been afflicting the son. And so this brings me to my first point, that when we pray, God answers no. And, you know, when we hear that no, it it can be very shocking. Um, I'm sure the father was just very dismayed at this point. And it reminds me of a a situation that I ran to my first year in college. And so this was summer of my first year. I decided to get my driver's permit. And I know it's a little bit late for most people, but in California, you can get around pretty easily without driving a car. Um, So I went to the DMV with my sister And this particular summer was very difficult for me because I did not do well in college my first year. And so my grades were really bad. (laughs) And I had this mentality that uh, I wasn't very good at school. And so one of the things I hated and that really made my grades go down was multiple choice tests. And I found out that 
the driving permit test is a multiple choice test. So I studied, was ready. My sister and I took the test. She found her results first, and she was ecstatic. She passed. Now, I took my test, and I was waiting for my results, and I was praying, asking God, begging him, uh, making deals that if I pass, I'll pray 20 times or something like that. Um, but God said no, <laughs> and I failed. Uh, and I didn't, I wasn't even close uh, to passing. And that just, uh, it really took a toll on me because uh, of what's been going on through the year. And a lot of my friends that were so excited to pass their tests and saying how easy it was, they didn't even study. But for me, I studied a lot and didn't pass. In fact, I, I took it again, and I failed again. Um, and this the test was supposed to be so easy. Um, but eventually, you know, God allowed me to pass the third time. But the first time, I, I didn't know. Why did God say no to my prayers? Well, we see that prayer helps us to be reminded of how we need to work with God. Again, prayer helps us to be rem- helps us to be reminded of how we need to work with God. In this situation, I think that God was really trying to work in my own character and spirit of humbling me, because in high school, I didn't study very much, and I was able to coast through and get into a good college, and I was just very blessed by God and didn't really recognize that blessing, and so that might be one of the answers of why God said no, Um, but This reminds me of Philippians 4.13, and it says this, I can do all this through him who gives me strength. In this verse, you can see that there's a lot that we can do, but it's through God. It is God who gives us strength to do what we can do. And so if you have been praying about something and have been getting the answer no, no, Uh, one thing I really encourage you to do is to take some time and reflect on that. Why, Why did God say no to my prayers? Why is he still allowing this to happen? Well, if you're not a natural uh, person that reflects on things, uh, feel free to talk with a friend, verbal process out loud. You can talk to me. You can give me a call if you really need some help figuring out why does God say no to my prayers? In the next section, we see that when we pray, God answers, wait. When we pray, God answers, wait. And this is Mark 9, verses 21 through 24. Jesus asked the boy's father, how long has he been like this? From childhood, he answered. It has often thrown him into fire or water to kill him. But if you can do anything, take pity on us and help us. If you can, said Jesus. Everything is possible for one who believes. Immediately, the boy's father exclaimed, I do believe. Help me overcome my unbelief. Well, back in verse 20, we saw that the boy was brought to Jesus, and immediately the spirit threw the boy onto the ground, and he was in convulsions, uh, foaming at the mouth. Now, again, put yourself in this situation if you saw a kid on the ground doing, having seizures, wouldn't you feel a, a sense of urgency? Um, but Jesus, he, he instead starts a discussion with the father, and the boy's just on the ground convulsing. In this situation, I, I think God was clearly saying, wait. And further on, um, from childhood, we find out that the son has been afflicted with this evil spirit. And that's got to be at least a couple of years. Now, uh, imagine your f- friends, any children, schoolmates, um, anybody at a young age who has been dealing with, I don't know, even health problems, maybe not even a, a spiritual possession, but health problems, and it's been a couple of years. And at this point, the father, I, I can imagine him not really having much faith. It's been so long. I mean, COVID-19, it's been a, a couple of months, but it feels like years. And this little boy had this problem for years. And God says, wait. 
Well, I think whenever God tells me to wait, I always remember verse 24, where the father exclaims, I believe, help me overcome my unbelief. And I I think that's something that we all can do. If you're struggling with faith or belief, that you can pray the same prayer. God, I believe, but can you help me with my unbelief? Help me overcome it. Some of you might be just frustrated waiting on the different ways of God answering our prayers. And uh, that might even look like how we've been handling COVID as a uh, country, uh, how we have been handling racial reconciliation during this time. And there's so many people frustrated. They can't even wait anymore because of how long it's been. And and that's completely understandable. And the Bible gives us some words to share with God, to voice our frustrations. And another prayer that I, I found helpful was in Psalm 88. Again, that's Psalm 88. And as I'm reading this, please follow along. Try to listen to the words and see if it strikes a chord in your soul and your emotions. And I know that some of you might claim that, I only have 3% emotions that I feel. So for those of you, please dig deep and look into your soul, look into your emotional state, and try to see what this psalmist has been feeling. All right, so it's Psalm 88. It says, Lord, you are the God who saves me. Day and night I cry out to you. May my prayer come before you. Turn your ear to my cry. I am overwhelmed with troubles, and my life draws near to death. I am counted among those who go down to the pit. I am like one without strength. I am set apart with the dead, like the slain who lie in the grave, whom you remember no more, who are cut off from your care. You have put me in the lowest pit, in the darkest depths. Your wrath lies heavily on me. You have overwhelmed me with all your waves. You have taken from me my closest friends and have made me repulsive to them. I am confined and cannot escape. My eyes are dim with grief. I call to you, Lord, every day. I spread out my hands to you. Do you know your wonders to the dead? Do their spirits rise up and praise you? Is your love declared in the grave, your faithfulness and destruction? Are your wonders known in the place of darkness or your righteous deeds in the land of oblivion? But I cry to you for help, Lord. In the morning, my prayer comes before you. Why, Lord, do you reject me and hide your face from me? From my youth, I have suffered and been close to death. I have borne your tears and am in despair. Your wrath has swept over me. Your tears have destroyed me. All day long, they surround me like a flood. They have completely engulfed me. You have taken from me friend and neighbor. Darkness is my closest friend. Now, I I wanted to show that prayer to you uh, because of um, the ways that this gives us words. And uh, John Stark says it best in this quote. He says, this is a prayer for the troubled. Derek Kidner says, the very presence of this psalm in the Bible shows us that God hasn't abandoned those who are full of trouble and despair. I'll say that again. God hasn't abandoned those who are full of trouble and despair, but that he's still with them. He wrote this psalm because he knows how men speak when they are desperate, men and women. Psalm 88 is God's way of giving us words when we don't have any, or maybe when we are fearful to express what we are thinking. When we pray, God answers wait. One of the things that, you know, my family and I have been struggling with that God has said wait to is uh, my mother-in-law's cancer. It's, she was diagnosed with cancer in March 2017, and it's been a, a journey of ups and downs. But I, I know that whenever I'm struggling, whenever I, I don't understand why God's allowing her to be afflicted with this disease, I can pray God, help my unbelief. Help me to overcome it. And I I look at this Psalm 88 and also see ways that, words that I can share with God that's on my heart. Well, we're coming into the next section, and in this section, it's the best answer you could hear. When we pray, God answers, yes. This is Mark 9, 25 through 29. 
When Jesus saw that a crowd was running to the scene, he rebuked the impure spirit. You deaf and mute spirit, he said. I command you, come out of him and never enter him again. The spirit shrieked, convulsed him violently, and came out. The boy looked so much like a corpse that many said, he's dead. But Jesus took him by the hand, lifted him to his feet, and he stood up. After Jesus had gone indoors, his disciples asked him privately, why couldn't we drive it out? He replied, this kind can come out only by prayer. I think that Jesus here is reminding the disciples at that end of where this can only come out by prayer, that we have to work in partnership with God, where we need to be in communication with God. And through that, we are then able to overcome what we can't do alone. Same with the disciples. They, they've been traveling. They've done exorcisms before, but maybe they got a little too ahead of themselves. Maybe this is God's way of telling them, hey, remember, I was the one who gave you the ability to do this, that I'm here partnering with you. It's not all your glory. It's my glory. Well, on, um, there is this very famous figure that is a good example of this, and he He's a strong prayer warrior, and his story is a great story of where God says yes, and he prays and communicates with this figure. So his name is George Mueller, and I'm going to read a a little excerpt that I found. So night was falling over the harbor of Bristol, England, and in the orphanage founded by George Mueller and his wife, the children were getting ready for bed. George was working in his study when his wife arrived with alarming news. We're out of milk she said. There isn't enough for the morning oatmeal. George laid aside his pen. This wasn't the first time that money needed to buy food and other supplies was tight. The Mueller's took in their first group of 30 girls in 1836, and their orphanage now housed over a hundred. From the first, George remained resolved never to ask for funds from people or to borrow money. He went to God alone for every need, trusting wholly in the Lord's faithfulness and provision. The pastor rose from his desk and reached for his wife's hand. Mary, he said, let us pray. Two orphanage employees joined them, and together they made their humble yet necessary requests to God. Tiny helpless mouths were depending on them for sustenance. Be assured, if you walk with him and look to him and expect help from him, George reminded them afterwards, he will never fail you. Someone knocked on the door. Mary hurried to answer, returning to the study a moment later. She handed her husband an envelope. It's a letter, George. Hurry up and open it. Enclosed was a sum of money, more than enough for the milk. Within minutes, two more letters arrived with money and pledges of support. This immediate and abundant response to prayer had become a typical experience for Mueller. After he came to faith and started meditating seriously on the Bible, he determined to simply trust God at his word. As a pastor, he decided to live without a salary, relying only on money given to him. George learned to pray faithfully from his heart, asking his father to move the hearts of men so that they would supply him and his family with what they needed to survive. Now, George, he is an exceptional example of a Christian trusting in God and communicating through prayer. But, you know, I think that we can learn a lot from his example. We can look up to this example and see that it's attainable. And, yeah, I think that George had a great sense of faith and trust in God, and that's something that we should strive for as well. Well, I I want you to think of your loved ones, friends at school or work, and anyone else that is missing out. Now, picture that person in your head. Um, And what they're missing out on is the opportunity to hear God say yes to their prayers. So what would it be like for that friend to experience that? What would it be like for them to experience God saying yes to their prayers? Well, we heard from this passage that God answers no, God answers wait, and God answers yes to our prayers. And throughout it all, we need to be praying in all situations. I know that some of you might not have prayed before, or some of you are kind of out of practice. And prayer is a muscle that needs to be practiced. And for those of you who don't know what it is, 
feel free to ask your friends that are Christians or one of the staff members or even me. Uh, ask us how that's done and we'll show you. And for those of you who just tend to forget, one pastor told me that what he does is he puts paper clips in his right pocket or pennies and he transfers it to his left pocket every time he prays. And so you can be praying throughout the day and be reminded through that simple practice. Now some of you are huge with cell phones and love technology, and you can set reminders on your phone as easily as that. But I invite anybody to come and join me in a time of prayer on Thursdays from 10 to 11 a.m. So I will probably send an email out with a Zoom invite, and during this time I'm going to be praying from 10 to 11. And you can join me if you have something on your heart or if there's something that you need to be prayed for. Uh, Please join me. And I'm going to end with this. Uh, This is a quote, again, from John Stark. And he says, Prayer exposes what God is doing. It shapes us into people who know how to be patient with his work. Prayer keeps us in step with him. Again, prayer keeps us in step with him. Please join me now for a time of prayer. Gracious Heavenly Father, we just thank you for the opportunity to be able to pray with you, to be able to lift up our concerns, our desires, Lord, and the things that we're struggling with. And we thank you, God, that you are able to answer us, giving us a yes, a no, a maybe, or a wait. And Lord, we ask that you help us to discern when you say no, when you say wait, and to be patient, God. We really ask that you would be able to just form our hearts in this way. And we pray, Lord, for all those who have been struggling during this time of COVID-19, those who have been struggling uh, with all the, the racial reconciliation and injustice that's been happening across the country. And just even in this world, Lord, the injustice that's very prevalent. So, Lord, we ask and lift these things up to you in your name. Amen. Thank you so much for joining us today. Now listen. Trust in the maker of all creation. Honor God with an enormous faith and extend yourselves in love. For no one lives beyond the Spirit's reach. Our Lord Jesus Christ be with you to defend you, within you to keep you, before you to lead you, beside you to guard you, and above you to bless you. Amen.